please start off by uh, telling me who you are and what you're famous for. I am James W. Lowen, sometimes called Jim Lowen. Uh, I'm probably famous for writing this book called Lies My Teacher Told Me, which I will say has now sold over a million and a half copies, uh, and it's still selling better than it used to. So I'm happy about that. That's who I am. You have written an awful lot about the Confederacy and what the South was fighting for. Have the events of the last year been shocking to you? All the events of the past year have not been shocking, but they've been pretty useful and pretty good, I think. Uh, I think we've had two watershed events. The first of all, of course, was the terrible murders of nine people in Charleston. And that caused people to realize uh, that the mystification of the Confederate cause, which we have dabbled in ever since 1890, and which we have put all over the landscape from Helena, Montana, and north of Seattle to uh, Key West, uh, that the Confederacy was about states' rights and that it was a valid cause and a deo vindici and all that stuff, uh, that that has some consequences. Uh, not everybody turns out like Dylan Roof, of course, but Dylan Roof could not exist were he not in an ocean of sympathizers that are far less extreme than him, but that do provide the ideological support for his pro-Confederate ideology. Uh, for that matter, the same pro-Confederate ideology underlay the uh, guy who killed everybody in Oklahoma City, uh, and of course, lots of other uh, of these terrorists. Um, so that was the first event. Uh, now, Nikki Haley, when she came out helpfully for taking down the flag in Charleston, uh, well, in Charleston, but especially in Columbia, she emphasized that this was so it would no longer offend the African Americans in, in uh, the state. But the more important, uh, and that's good, but the more important reason to take it down is so it will no longer infest the psyches of the white folks in the state and throughout the rest of the United States. And then we have an event that was so seminal that I actually refer to BC as in before Charlottesville. Uh, I remember, for instance, I was one of the two experts uh, for the Baltimore, Maryland Commission on Confederate Monuments. And although this commission was almost entirely black, they were absolutely reluctant to talk, to come out in favor of uh, removing these monuments. Uh, Baltimore actually has seven Confederate monuments and one United States monument, although it sent two and a half times as many people to the U.S. Army as it did to the Confederate Army and never seceded, but never mind. Uh, okay, uh, so it, it was with grave difficulty that we actually got them to come out in favor of uh, removing two of them. And then one within one week of what happened in Charlottesville, the mayor removed all four of the key monuments that were under discussion. Uh, and that happened in many other locations, at places that had been discussing it for a long time, New Orleans famously, but places in Kentucky and all over the place. Uh, suddenly, they are coming down after Charlottesville. Well, I think that's good, and I want to explain I might, why I think that's good, because there are some historians, uh, although that changed too after Charlottesville, but there were a lot of historians before Charlottesville who thought this is terrible to take down these monuments. Uh, people who think it's terrible do not understand the difference between remembering history and commemorating somebody and saying they're good. Uh, the statue of Robert E. Lee in Charlottesville, all it said was, as I remember, and I saw it about a month before it uh, you know, was removed, kind of removed, uh, said Robert E. Lee. Now that doesn't tell you, it doesn't even tell you he was the major general of the Confederate Army. Uh, the statue of Jefferson Davis, uh, how about the highway, the highway that goes from uh, Alexandria, Virginia, all the way down through Texas and then comes up to north of Seattle and hits the Canadian border. Uh, all that says is Jefferson Davis was a great man and we should honor him. Doesn't tell you anything about it. If you take the name off, if you take the statue down and you leave a, uh, you put up a historical marker that said, right here on this hill, there used to be a big tall uh, statue of Jefferson Davis on an Italian stallion, uh, to make a cinematic reference. Um, and it went up in the middle of the nadir period of race relations in 1922. It was part of the white supremacy era of that time. And we have, you can put in some details if you want. And it came down in 
2018 or whenever it, what we're talking about does come down, then the new landscape tells a hundred times more history than it did just from having this monument. So the idea that we are erasing history is far-fetched. In fact, it's just the opposite. Thank you so much.